guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, I got a fairly substantial run time on my CNC going, so I decided to sneak a job in for my son. And you know how it is when your kids ask you to do something, it's kind of hard to say no, no matter how bad the job's going to be. Well, what he brought me was a pair of uh, engine block heads off his Silverado with a few of the exhaust suds snapped off clean to the surface of the head, the gasket surface. So, well, the fact that it's an exhaust stud means it's had seen some extreme heat, and chances are it's fairly well seized in there. And I have taken a punch to these things. I've soaked them in coil and such, and no bueno, they're not going to move. So they're stuck pretty good. Now, a lot of philosophy on removing studs like this, one of which is easy out. Everybody says, well, just get an easy out. Well, I'm not a fan of easy out screw extractors. I never have been, because the very nature of the screw extractor uh, in my world, once you've drilled a hole in that screw, which never seems big enough for the amount of torque that you have to put on something that's frozen solid, uh, when you drive an easy out down into it and start to turn, what are you doing effectively? An easy out is a conical geometry, right? It tries to dig down into the part in a left hand helix so it'll spin out. At the same time, it's expanding the screw and it's locking it up even tighter. Never been a fan. Uh, I would say that they are, they do have their place, but they're for screws that aren't going to argue about coming out. Okay, they just broke off for some reason, maybe you stripped something out, you want to drill it out, boom. Use a left-handed drill. Of course, everybody's going to say that, but when you use a left-handed drill and you're coming down on the part, if the drill grabs the screw, in theory, since it's turning counterclockwise, it's just going to walk it straight out. But here's the but. As you're pulling down, drilling on a milling machine or drill press, of course, and that screw grabs, as the screw starts to come back towards up and you're pulling down, it's an immediate, instant amplification of the load on that drill. And if you can't feel that, that momentary, oh, here we go, here comes the rejection, and walk out with the stud, well, you're going to explode your drill, so be careful with that. Uh, the way I do it, I punch the center out, I drill the center out of the screw, completely drill the center out of the screw, and create a spring down inside of the hole. And it works really well. If you can't get it out with a punch, this is the next best thing. So let me zoom in on this little graphic right here, and I'll show you the mentality behind it. Then I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use to do this, and then I'm going to actually go out and see if I can get the studs out. I have three of them to do, and I will film at least one for you. So. Let's take a look at this and we'll move on to the tools. Okay, there's your part. The red is the female thread, the blue is the male thread, and, well, it's cut away, of course, so you don't have to worry about this side, but the root of a bolt, the root diameter of an external thread is smaller than the bore diameter of the internal thread, right? The hole that you drill before you tap the hole is bigger than the distance at the base of the threads if you look and measure the bolt. Good thing to know. The other good thing to know is when you look at a thread in the top of a part that's been center drilled properly or spot faced properly, the best thing to pick up on is the conical countersink feature, not the, not the screw pitch or the screw itself, because it's going to lie to you. As you section off a screw, what you get is a series of egg-shaped elliptical looking things that are dancing all around. So if you can pick up on the counter sink right here to establish your center line, you are in much better shape. Now when you drill this out, when you drill the screw out, and I, like I said, I drilled completely out, I am going to pick a drill that's a little bit smaller than the pilot drill used for the thread that I am trying to repair. Here's the logic. You can see the red, you can see the blue. Right there is the pilot drill diameter. And right here is the root diameter of the screw. You want something as close to the pilot drill as you can get so that when you drill down through it, you leave behind only the high. 
high spots in the helix. Now you're going to say, okay, well, great, now I've got to pick them all out. Actually, they're still connected. You've just created a spring. And if you wind a spring counterclockwise on a right-hand screw, if you wind it counterclockwise, it shrinks. And it makes it a lot easier to pull out. And that is the technique that I've used for many years, and I've never failed to get one out. Knock some wood, right? So that's the technique that I'm going to use. I'm going to drill down through it. I'm going to create a spring on the inside. And the only danger that I can tell you about doing something like this is take your time. You do not want the remaining spring to wrap around the drill or engage the flutes. That's a danger when you're doing this with an end mill. You know, like a pulling out a tap. When you're coming down through the center of a tap with an end mill, and you get through the bottom and the sides of the tap fall into the flutes of the end mill and it explodes. Now you need a wire EDM or a ram EDM because now you have carbide end mill jammed down in your part two. One of the dangers with this is the very last piece. As you're drilling through this, this little chunk at the bottom, you'll feel it. The pressure will increase because it has stuck to the front of your drill and it's acting like a little hat on the front of the drill and it's just not going to cut anymore. Pull it out, see if it's stuck to the face of the drill, blow it out, whatever. Then go back and pick the helix out in a counterclockwise spin with a pair of needle nose pliers on it. We'll do that for you. Let's take a look at the tools. Let's take a look at some of my favorite tools for getting screw threads out. These are dental probes. And most gun shows, most hardware shows, most tool shows, you know, flea markets and stuff are going to have a bunch of these laying around. And to be uh, honest with you, I don't know how to tell the difference between a quality dental tool and a not-so-quality dental tool. So if you are a dental professional or there are some markings on these I should be looking for or we can be looking for, by all means let me know because there's nothing worse than assuming something like this is rigid and when you go and pry something it just straightens out or snaps off. So we have two hooked which are real good for getting in the lead of a thread and getting that one lead to pop out. This is a little bit heavier. Another probe for the exact same reason, getting underneath the uh, remaining thread. Once you punch it out, of course, once you drill the center out of it, you're going to have a little spring hook, so that's a good thing to pull out. And then these guys here, this is just a hardened drill blank with a small flat on one side so I can get down alongside the existing drilled hole. And this is one of my favorites right here. This is cylindrically ground on the outside with a flat tip on it. And this is ideal for walking down a hole and if there's something hanging out it'll engage it and it'll act like a little pick. So the cylindrical grind is for the hole in the part and the angle is just so that it's not going straight in, it keeps it against the wall. And when you encounter whatever you encounter, if it's in the way, it's just like a little chisel. And if it's a part of a thread, part of a screw remaining in there, it'll pull it out of the pitch. So it works really well. Alright, let's go out to the machine, see if we can dig a screw out of a Chevy engine head. All right, this is the ideal scenario. If somebody brings you a snapped off stud, the first thing you gotta do is ask them if they messed with it. If they said, yeah, I tried to get it out, and then you gotta charge them three times what it normally would charge them, because they probably made your life a whole lot harder. What you don't wanna see is damage to the countersink around the hole. Now, this one has two punch marks in it because I personally tried to punch it out first, and with a, with a subsurface stud like this, if you can drive it counterclockwise, side to side, and get it to move, chances are you can get it to unlock. But this one is not going to do that. Now, this little hook right here is going to be your best friend at the end of this video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to knock the center out of this, I'm going to drill it out, and then I'm going to try to coax this particular piece of this broken stud into the middle like the break-off tang on a Healy coil. I'll fill the hole with a rust buster and I'll let it penetrate around the outside a little bit and then I will put needle nose pliers on this 
and twist it and hopefully this will come out like a spring. But the key to this is centering up your tool so that when you hit that broken stud, you go right down the middle of it. It can be very deceiving to pick up on the actual thread itself because it's a series of egg-shaped cross sections that are, that are helical in nature. And if you've ever sanded off a broken stud, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. This is ideal to have a nice clean countersink available to you. So whatever you have to do to line up to get your machine on center with that, do it. And be careful that the center drill doesn't hit some of these high spots and walk off as it's trying to get down. If you see any movement in the center drill, by all means, dust this with an end mill first and then center drill and then go down the center. We want to go to the size of the pilot drill hole for the internal thread, not the external. If we can do that, then we can, or I can, grab a hold of this and pull it out like a spring. If there's anything left in there, it's going to be one piece and it's not going to want to do that. So you can pass a drill down through here and create a spring out of a broken stud like this. And sorry for the wobble guys, this camera is literally laying right on this surface right here. And I'm holding this by hand. So the first thing I'm going to do is line the machine up with this countersink, zero everything out, and then I will try to establish a true hole in the center and all the way through. If you have another hole available to you in the head, by all means, scope that one out first. That way you know what diameter and what depth to go to. I picked the gauge pin out of my set, put it in the drill chuck, and we are going to visually, I am going to visually align this, so that when that pin comes down, that hole disappears. When using this technique, it is advisable to use a pin a little smaller than the counter sink so you can still see a remnant of the edge. And you can, in this particular image, you can see a shadow. A little black right there and one on the other side. So this is a good line. I'm going to zero this out and start with the drilling. Okay, once you've established a nice flat surface, start drilling. Let's see if it works this time.
it may be a little hard to see on this, but what you want to see is you want to see a striped helical pattern running down the inside of that hole. That would assure you that you have removed the minor diameter of the stud, yet not encountered, there you go, there's a shot of it, see the little stair steps? I have not hit the aluminum of the head and I've knocked out the minor diameter of the screw. I'm going to continue this all the way through and this should come out of here like the spring. Hopefully. there was a little bit of air underneath that stud and it just submarined in there I hope some of it came out with the drill but boy I can't tell right now holy mackerel I was not expecting that I would rather have it submarine down into the hole than pack up in the flute of the drill or the end mill and explode. Well, you can see we got some movement out of that. Hopefully I can still access that top part and unscrew it. I'm going to find out. Okay, that stud migrated down into that hole about five millimeters and that made it even harder to get out. But at this point in the absence of an easy out, I'm going to go Drill all the way through it. I have no choice. Let's see if this works. Okay, it is worth noting that as the drill broke through the bottom of that screw, I could feel it. And as I retracted the drill, it appears that the bottom of the screw came with it. So I'm going to grab a hold of this little shard right here in the center, and we'll see if we can unwind this like a spring, like I said it would happen. current situation is we have the center of the screw punched completely out. I know a lot of people are going to say, why don't you use a left-handed drill? Well, because I didn't have a left-handed drill. So we're going to go with the right hand. But having that thing walk down in that hole was not pleasant. The bottom of the screw did come out with the drill tip, which was good. But now there's a, there's a loose helix about a quarter of an inch down into here. If I can get the first turn out and grab it, I can unwind this thing like it's uh, nobody's business. So... I'm going to pick at it for a while and we'll get back to you when I get that because it's just nothing but a whole bunch of down in the hole with a probe at this point. 
All right, guys, after minimal picking, and I mean minimal, maybe a minute or two, I was able to get the lead thread. Let me see if I can get in there for you. Right there. That's what you want to see. You want to see that little hook coming out of the thread. That is absolutely ideal. Now I'm going to spin this in a counterclockwise rotation, staying right over the center of the hole, and hopefully we can close up that loose helix that's still engaged in the, in the head itself, and it will walk out. You'd be surprised how much waste matter there's going to be coming out of this hole. I bet it's about three or four inches of actual string, so try not to break it, and let's see what happens. A little penetrating oil would not be a bad thing at this point. It's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. Yes, it is. Right. Okay, that's a pretty good piece, but I just can't think that that's. That just can't be all of it. Nope, it's not. There you go. 100%. Now it's really important to get right down the middle of that screw, guys, and if you can, Drill it a little bit oversized, it wouldn't hurt. If this is solid on any of the sides, you're not going to get it to do that. It's just going to fight you the whole way. So don't be afraid to use a drill that's the same size as the hole that you inspect. Alright, that's it. That was a pain in the neck. Thanks for watching.